Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Rivals on Gran Turismo Sport once again. This is a series where we pit various cars which are similar or even sometimes direct rivals, deliberately so, to each other to see which one comes off on top, both in terms of how quick they are around a track, not too surprisingly, but also in terms of the kind of numbers that they can give you. Now for those who are, again, perhaps new to the series, for the purpose of this series, we generally put the cars against each other with fully tuned specs. And a lot of people don't understand that. Kind of surprised at this point, because I've explained it a few times, but the reason why I do that is because this is purely for the fun of it. So you can already see what the stock specs are just by looking at it in the dealership. That's not that interesting. So we want to see what the ultimate potential of both cars is, and that in turn tells you the kind of performance range that both cars have, from stock all the way up to this top tier level. So, for this particular Rivals match, I'm doing one which isn't directly paired up, but it kind of is in a, a spiritual sense, you could say, because of course, as we mentioned in the Supra review for the new Gazoo Racing version, it's based on the same platform that the new BMW Z4 is going to share, more of a pure sports car than a high-end sports car, which is what the Supra was in the 90s. So, the closest thing that we have to that is the Z4 GT3 from 2011. So it's seven years older, but still the similarities between the two cars are actually quite striking. In many ways, they are very, very similar. Now, there's some things about the cars that we're not told, the engine size, for instance, on the Toyota, but we'll get to that in due time. So first of all, we'll do, as always, a very quick breakdown of either car, maybe some of the good stuff and not so good stuff, and then pit them head to head in that top trump style numbers battle to see which one comes out on top. So, first of all, we have, not too surprisingly, the new Supra. This is the fresh meat on the game. It's the car that a lot of people are excited about for good reason. It has an iconic name, just like the returning GTR did, and more recently the NSX, and so it has a lot to live up to. Whereas something like a BMW Z4, it has the Z lineage, to live up to, but the Z3 isn't exactly as much of an icon as something like the JDM cars that I just mentioned, so the Toyota almost has more to lose in this battle. Now I already touched on the fact that, in a much more in-depth way actually in the review, that the Supra has a very nimble body style, and again many comparisons were drawn by myself, by the comments, to just how similar the shape looks and how similar the car feels to this Z4 GT3 that it's up against in the video. Now, of course, it's going to be a great rival for the newer one, but it's actually a really good rival for the one in the game, except the difference that seven years of tech can make should be apparent. A car that's seven years older in the same category should not be as fast, especially when it comes to modern race cars. And not even just because of numbers, it's actually more about stuff like Aero technology, downforce technology, a variety of other things which add these small refinements to the car. But all of these small refinements add up into being multiple seconds quicker than, say, their equivalent was from seven years before. So that's the kind of difference that you would hope to see here, either in stock form or in fully tuned form. And the thing is, you actually do notice that difference, because although you haven't seen the lap time of the Z4 in the video yet, the Supra was faster. Spoiler alert, <laughs> but that's not too surprising. It should be faster. Now, I will say that the Supra is the kind of car that, as I mentioned in my review, if you drive it in a vacuum, it doesn't feel that quick, at least not to me, and apparently from the comments, not to many others as well. But when you do actually compare it to others, such as this BMW, it's actually very competitive. So it seems to be one of those deceptive cars that isn't quite as fun to drive, but can definitely get the job done. But again, of course, that's against this rival on this particular track, so who can say on other circuits you'd have to do breakdowns there. But for now, the Supra is well proportioned, it's relatively forgiving, quite easy to drive. Of course you can get the tail out, but again, it's not quite as tail happy, I would say, as the BMW is. And in terms of power across the board, it's impressive. It's got almost 700 horsepower, that's more than enough to get the job done, weighs under 1100 kilos after the weight loss package has been applied. So yeah, it's perfectly acceptable as a rival to at least the BMW, if not others too. So overall, the Supra is a car which is definitely quick, 
as I said, it's the quicker of the two here, but it's not necessarily quite as engaging to drive as I would have hoped it would be. And again, if you want to hear more about that, of course, check out the individual review that I did for it. But now let's see how the BMW compares. Well, actually, the BMW surprised me by being very similar to the Toyota in terms of its spec. I actually expected the BMW to end up with more power and perhaps the Toyota to end up with more torque. Now, part of that did turn out to be the case, but in terms of power, they're actually exactly the same, which is interesting given that there's seven years between them. And of course, you would want many cars in the category to end up being a similar kind of level in terms of power at least, because that's kind of the point. They're in Group 3, many of them are GT3 cars, so you'd want them to be similar, to be fair. But at the same time, some of them do vary quite wildly, in terms of torque in particular, and on this occasion as well, torque is one of the biggest differences between the two cars. In terms of how good the BMW is on its own, well it has the big advantage for many of us that if you've played Gran Turismo in the past, such as on Gran Turismo 6, you're already probably well versed with the car. It was even cheaper on that game at 350 grand, and I would say it was one of the best GT class race cars in the whole game. Not just because it was so cheap, but because it was so good. The top speed is fantastic, it's very easy to drive. Now I would say it's not quite as dominant, in fact probably nowhere near as dominant, to be honest, as it was on Gran Turismo 6, but it's still a very good competitor, it's still a popular one. When I was looking for liveries to slap on the car, even up until today, people are still pumping out tons of liveries for this BMW, which considering it's been in the game since day one, that's impressive. Not many cars can maintain that kind of interest, so it's good to see that it is still a fan favourite. As far as how it feels against the Toyota, I expected it to be quicker, actually. Even though the Toyota had a couple of advantages, I did think that the BMW would have the upper hand because of how good it was on Gran Turismo 6, but it just didn't pan out that way. In fact, it's quite a lot slower. And of course, if you lap and lap and lap all day, you could refine both cars even more than I have. And with a different driver, for instance, or especially on a different circuit, you could see all kinds of different outcomes. But for now, at least, I did find the Toyota to be the quicker of the two. The BMW is certainly competitive, you'd hope it would be, and it's a fan favourite for a reason, it's still a good car. So that's it for the individual breakdowns, what about how they actually do compare? Well, let's find out. Well, as usual with these rivals matches, there are certain ways, especially with race cars, that they will always be equal. Pricing, for instance, all of the Group 3 cars, at least as far as I can recall, are 450,000 credits. Both of these are as well, so as I've said before, you could elect to give neither of them a point, but I'm going to give them both a point just for the sake of it. Likewise with the category, of course they're both Group 3, so again, let's just give them both a point, it doesn't really mean anything, but let's do it anyway. In terms of the engine size, that's where it gets interesting, because we're not told what the Toyota is. With the BMW, on the other hand, as you can see, it is a 4.4 litre. Now, I am going to give the BMW the point there, because I don't think the new Toyota is going to be that big. Now, I may be wrong, and that stands to be seen, but I just don't feel like the Toyota has that size engine. It feels more like maybe even a 2 or a 3 litre, in a similar way to some of the Super GT cars. Again, I could be wrong, but it just doesn't feel like a 4.4 litre to me. As far as power... Again, they're both exactly the same. I did not expect that. I thought that the Z4 would have the advantage, but no, they both have 692. It's a good level to be working with. Certainly competitive against stuff like the Vipers, the R8s, the Huracans. So again, we'll give them both a point there. As far as torque, though, it really does swing in favour of the Toyota by a big, big margin, over 600 pound-feet to the 516 of the Z4. That's a pretty massive difference, especially from what I would consider probably has the larger engine of the two, the BMW. But that's partially due to the aspiration, of course. As far as the weight, it's super, super close between the two. 1,094 kilos on the BMW, 1,093 on the Toyota, which once again is very interesting given that, of course, it is sharing the platform, as we said, with the new Z4, but it's funny how similar it is to the existing Z4, which indicates that maybe the new Z4 might not be that much different either once it comes to the game. 
or if <laughs> it comes to the game. As far as weight though, the fact that the Toyota does have the one kilo advantage is just enough of an advantage to give it a higher horsepower per ton. Technically both of them have 633 horsepower, but to be technical about it, the BMW has 632.5, which of course we round up, but either way, even if you round it up, the Supra has 633.1, and so we'll give that one the point there. Now in terms of lap time, you could see the difference between the two, and again, it makes such a huge difference, tuning, track, driver, all that kind of stuff, but I found the BMW to do a 131.1, and I found the Supra to do a 129.1, which is a pretty massive difference, and I feel certain that for other people that would probably flip-flop the other way around, but that was the case for me. Both of them, as I said, fully tuned form, racing hard tyres, even similar methods of tuning because of how similar the cars are. As far as overall points though, that does mean that the loser, on this occasion, very rarely in fact, is also the slower car. Because quite often, for those again who aren't familiar with this series, you'll often find that the car with less points will often be the fastest. That hasn't happened here though, the Toyota is the dominant force of the two, which again, you would kind of hope that it is, given that it's seven years newer and in the same category. It has six points to the four, of the BMW, and if you discount all of the points which are equal, which are incidentally the price, the category, and the power, then the unique points are actually three unique ones in favor of the Toyota, with only one for the BMW, and even that one's not certain. The one unique point that the Beamer has is engine size, which is TBD of course, but for the Toyota the clear victories are the torque, the weight, and the horsepower per tonne. Plus, the lap time, even though we don't give it a point for that. So overall, very interesting battle. In some ways, they are surprisingly similar, not just the look, but the spec as well. But when it came down to it, the Toyota was the quicker of the two, and so, although I didn't find it to be fun to drive, necessarily, and I still don't, this would seem to be a pretty hearty recommendation for at least giving it a try. But that's it for this Rivals match. Of course, stick around on the channel for more like this, and for tuning, reviews, etc. And for now, as always, Thanks for watching.